Hello students, welcome back to our lesson. So for today's lesson, the learning objective is on writing, right? Specifically on scale writing 4.1.2, which is at the end of this lesson, you should be able to explain causes and consequences of actions, events, or simple processes by writing about an experience with appropriate use of language. So, meaning that at the end of this lesson, you should be able to come up with a piece of writing about your own experience. Okay, what does it mean by an account of a true event? Okay, in Malay, an account of a true event is, uh, is directly translated to kisah peristiwa sebenar. So, basically, um, kisah benar lah kan? Uh, your own experience. So, it, mean, it means that it is a, a true story. Alright, now let's look at the first task, task A. Let's read the instruction. Read the account and answer the questions. Alright, so basically we have to read the account first. This true story first. Alright, let's read it uh, together. It was the third day of a marvellous holiday I was having on the island of Penang in Malaysia. The hotel was enormous, which meant the swimming pool was crowded every day. I had learned to get up early and save a sun lounger by leaving my towel on it. After that, I was usually starving, so I enjoyed a delicious breakfast in the hotel restaurant. Later, I'd go down to the pool and enjoy a swim. But on that day, as I approached the sun lounger, I was astonished to see my towel on the floor and a teenage boy on the lounger. I was furious, so I picked up my filthy towel, waved it at him and said, What's this? He replied that it was a towel. I explained that it was my towel and he just smiled and said, Maybe the... The wind blew it off. This boy was driving me up the wall, I shouted so that everyone could hear. It's very rude to steal someone's sun lounger, you know. Then I turned round to leave. But as I turned, I slipped and fell into the pool. Everyone thought it was hilarious, especially the boy on the sun lounger. I just wanted the ground to open up and swallow me. And there's a symbol here, an explosive, and then it's like an angry drawing, and then uh, a lightning, and then, yeah. Based on the drawing, we can understand that this boy is feeling angry and frustrated, right? Alright, so based on this uh, writing, where do you think the writer is writing this uh, experience in? Okay, looking at the drawing and then looking at the the you know the 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 reality of the drawing, the you know the nature of the drawing, it looks like a, a diary, right? Right, because in a diary, people would normally uh, vent out their feeling. People would normally write down their you know their true experience, and then together with a, a doodle of uh, drawings to express and to visualize the writer's feeling at that moment. So I think this is a diary. Okay, now that we have read the, the writer's diary, okay, the writer's experience, let's answer these questions here. Question 1 until 5. The first one, when and where did the, the event take place? When and where? So the event took place on the third day of a marvelous holiday. Yeah. Third day of the writer's holiday on the island of where? Island of Penang. Okay. What about the second question? 
how did the writer feel during and at the end of the experience? Okay, during his experience, the writer, the writer felt, felt what? Felt angry, yes, angry. He felt furious. Uh huh. And then, at the end of the experience, look at here, the last paragraph. At the end of experience, what do you think the writer is feeling? Everyone thought it was hilarious, especially the boy on the sound lounger. I just wanted the ground to open and to open up and swallow me. It means that the writer is feeling, feeling shy, feeling embarrassed. And why, 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 why do you think the writer is feeling embarrassed? Hmm? Embarrassed. Why do you think the writer is feeling embarrassed? It is because he slipped and fell into the pool huh. to the writer uh, he thought that this uh, this uh, incident is embarrassing you know Yela, once you were once furious yeah you show you you show your anger to everyone and then suddenly you fell into the pool so that's kind of embarrassing la. okay now the third question which tenses does the writer use uh, what tense? If you are writing about your experience that had happened before, that had happened in the past, what tense should you use? Yeah, you should use the past tense. Right, past tense. Okay, past tense includes simple past, uh, past continuous, and pass perfect pass perfect all right number four which which linking words or phrases does the writer use okay we've learned about linking words before do you still remember what linking words are so basically linking words are Linking words are words that you can use to connect your ideas or sequence your ideas in your writing. So, so do you, do you see any linking words in the in the in the writer's essay? Okay, let's try to look at the writer's essay uh, again. Okay. Uh, let's scan. Let's just scan. It was third. Blah 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 blah. blah. And. After that, so later, around 10 days I approached the sun lounge, I was astonished. Uh, so I picked up my filthy wave. There was a uh, with the wind blew it off. This boy was throwing me over. I shot that but then. Everyone thought it was hilarious, especially the point where I just wanted okay. So those are uh, maybe I could I should like highlight so that you can see better. This this okay later after that. So this the those that I highlighted with blue highlighter is what we call linking words. Right. Next question, how does the writer manage to make the account exciting? Uh, so basically, how does the writer manage to make the story, the, the writing of the story, the writing of the experience, exciting? So how? Yeah, when writing a story, you should use direct speech, uh, exclamation marks, and variety of adjectives and idioms expressing feelings okay let's try to spot any direct speech so basically direct speech is a, a, a dialogue okay do you f do you see any direct speech or dialogue in this writing let's use a different colored i want to use purple right the writer uses direct speech direct speech is the dialogue uh, Okay, and then exclamation mark. 
when you have exclam exclamation mark, uh, you understood that this uh, the writer is trying to you know express anger or you know a, a very intense feeling. Okay, this is another direct speech. You know. Okay, exclamation mark. Okay, and the writer also uses adjective. Okay, for adjective, let's use a different colored uh, highlighter, yellow one. Okay, the yellow color. So, what are the adjectives? Uh, filthy towel. Filthy. Mm, delicious. Enormous. Crowded. Marvelous. You see, those are adjectives. Adjectives is what we call as describing word. Words that describe uh, a noun. Words that describe things. Okay. Which, um, for, for example, the word marvelous here. The word marvelous here describes the holiday he was having. Okay. The holiday was marvelous. And the word delicious here describes the breakfast he was having in the hotel. Okay. The delicious breakfast. And what else? Uh, hilarious. Yes, and so on and so forth. Okay, there are a lot of adjectives in here. Okay, other than that, what makes the story exciting? Idioms. Yeah, idioms. What is idioms? Idioms ni uh, macam simpulan, simpulan bahasa ya. Uh, for example, eh, uh, this one. Okay, let's use a different colored highlighter. Green color. Okay. Uh, Wanted the ground to ground to open and swallow me. Okay, the ground doesn't physically and literally going to open. Okay? the ground is not life. Macam kita kan, ada mulut and open up. No, uh, it's just a, a metaphor. It's just an idiom so that yeah to signify that he his, he was feeling very embarrassed that he doesn't want to be seen by people. You see any other idiom? Hmm. I think that's all. Okay. If you see one, uh, just comment in the comment section below. Okay. Alright, now let's move on to the next task. Task B. Alright, let's read the instruction. Read the account again and find words that mean these words. Very nice. Okay, so basically you have to, we have to read it. Just no need to read. Lah. Just scan. Scan through and find a word that means this, that carry this meaning. Very nice, very big, very hungry. Okay, in paragraph one, okay, we were given uh, it was we were given a clue there in paragraph one. Okay, the first one is very what was it again? Very nice. Okay, which word in paragraph one means very nice? Yeah, I think it is it is this one, marvelous. All right, so the first one is marvelous. Ma, ver, marvelous. And then very big, very big. What's the word that means that carry the me the the same meaning as very big? Is it eno enormous? Yeah, it's enormous, right? Enormous. What about very hungry? Very hungry, okay. In paragraph one, very hungry. So starving. Can okay. you see the word starving there? Mm. Yeah, here it is, starving. So number three, very hungry, okay means starving what about very tasty very tasty yes delicious delicious okay the next one number five we can find the word in paragraph two very surprised very angry very dirty very funny right okay which one is very surprised I was yeah, astonished. Astonished, very surprised. What about very angry? Uh, 
I was furious. Yes, furious means very angry. What about um, very dirty? Yeah, filthy. This word, filthy. What about very, what was it just now? Very, very funny. Very funny. Huh? Uh, towel. Where is it? Do you see it? Oh, it's in paragraph 3. We can find it in paragraph 3. Here it is. Hilarious. Yeah. There it is. Hilarious. Very funny. So, very surprised is astonished. Very angry, few, furious, very dirty is filthy, very funny, hilarious. All right, so there you go. There is our answer. Okay, now let's look at the next task. Let's read the instruction. Replace the strong adjectives in the sentences below with very and the adjectives in the box. Okay, so basically we have a few words in the red uh, word bank here. Bad, tired, cold, small, pleased, interesting. Pleased here means macam you rasa senang lah. You rasa senang hati macam tu lah. Okay, we stayed at a tiny cottage in the woods so the word tiny here means very 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 what very bad or very tired very cold very small very small yes good job now the second one I found the cruise down the river fascinating so fascinating here means very very interesting. Sangat menarik. Fascinating ni sama lah. Like, uh, uh, the same meaning as very interesting. Okay. Number three. Tina had forgotten to bring her gloves and her hands were freezing. Freezing can be the same as very, very, what? Very cold okay let's cross out the words that we have used very small very cold okay number four we were exhausted after walking to the top of the hill exhausted to tired so exhausted is very tired uh -huh. all right what about the next the next one number five mr and mrs wright were delighted to win a holiday to Thailand. Delighted. Macam, delighted here, macam very, very happy lah, very pleased. Uh, see though, there's the word pleased. So, macam senang lah, macam senang hati. Very pleased. Very pleased. Okay. So, we are only left with bad. So, Number six, we wanted to go swimming, but the weather was dreadful. Dreadful here means very, very bad. Hmm. So there you go. There is the answer for task C. Okay, for the next task, this is where you are going to write your own experience. Okay, now let's read the instruction for task D. Think about a funny, embarrassing scary or annoying experience that you have had and write about it. So what kind of experience that's highlight? Funny. Funny. Eh. Funny, embarrassing, scary or annoying experience. Okay. Before we start, let's read the tips first. Okay. When writing an account of a true event, okay, first, 
you must follow the plan for writing a story okay what is it what is the plan okay see page 33 of your textbook let's look at the page 33 of tech of your textbook so this is the plan we have done this before in in school and when we meet face to face uh, this is how you plan your story okay in case you forgot okay okay when writing a story narrate events according to the plan we plan below okay there are three parts the first part is introduction the second part is the body main part how many body how do you need to have two to three paragraphs two to three paragraphs right okay and then the last one conclusion so how many uh, total paragraphs that you need to have introduction one introduction one main part two or three paragraphs let's take the minimum two paragraphs and then a conclusion all right so between four to five paragraphs okay that's how how long you need to write your experience okay in introduction what you need what do you need to do in introduction so basically you need to describe the setting of the story the time place weather and etc and introduce the main characters hmm. Let's highlight. Describe the setting and then introduce the main characters. And then in the body, what do you need to write about? Mention what happened, what happened, what the characters did, saw, heard, said, etc. And how they felt. Okay, the feeling, the emotion, the experience. Okay, and in conclusion, the last one, describe what happened in the end and make a comment. Okay, make a short comment what happened in the end basically this is where you conclude lah. this is where you make a, you wrap up your story okay all right okay, the second one okay just now we looked at the how to plan okay the outline of your story uh, let's look at the next one use the first person pronoun I and we uh, why does it need to be a first person pronoun Sebab this is your experience. This is your experience. So you have to uh, use the first person pronoun because you are not telling a story based on other people's experience, kan? Uh, kalau you telling a story based on other people's experience, you need to use the a different pronoun like them, they, he or she. So this is your story. So the pronoun you need to use is I and we. Okay, next, divide your account into paragraphs. So, how many paragraphs did you need to have? Four to five. All right, and then, next, use past tenses and linking words or phrases. And next, try to make it interesting for the reader by using direct speech, questions, and exclamation marks. Adverbs. Or adverbial phrases, for example, suddenly, fortunately, to my surprise, and etc. A variety of adjectives, for example, awful instead of bad, right? And then expressions or idioms like I jumped out of my skin or my heart was in my mouth, and etc. Okay, so that is all for now. I will leave you to your creativity and imagination, uh, and I hope to see your writings um, at the end of this class so like usual you will have up until 3 p.m today uh, to submit your writing and if you have an, if you need more time uh, or if you have any more question just let me know right all right so that's all thank you for coming and i'll see you guys again next time goodbye